Proof tonight, where you know you you, you sit you sit in these little rooms in, in the states or wherever you might be, and you write things that you feel like will connect with people. And I just took out an ear and just had this moment, like who who would have ever thought that music could mean so much to someone, could communicate something uh, so deeply to someone, and then it to be our uh, you know our home uh, city. It put all those things together, and it kind of became nuclear in my soul. Yeah. And I just had a moment where I just kind of, you know, you know, almost like time stood still for a moment and you just got to like absorb that. And uh, those moments don't happen all the time. No. And so when they do happen, you know, you, you mark them in your mind and, and this is one, you know, that we won't soon forget, that's for sure. This is us going from New Zealand to not only our birth land, but our birth city, Sydney, Australia. Come along for the journey. So we're getting ready to get on uh, an airplane, Qantas Airlines to be precise, and head to Sydney, the uh, town of my birth. I haven't been there in, uh, I think, over a decade. I've got my family with me. Uh, Jude and I have been talking about airplanes, and we're getting ready to go on a 737, because uh, we love airplanes, don't we, Jude? Yeah, we do. Well, yeah. Mitchell asked me if I have any tips yeah. for traveling internationally with three kids. And I was like, yes, come on. So pirate's booty, tip number one. This is my last bag of it, so we'll see what happens next. Number two, uh, we don't do screen time at home. iPads, right over here. That's my gut. Do it. Just, it's fine. They'll be okay. All those rules go out the window. Just survive. Um, three, more snacks. These are snakes. This is Luke's favorite candy. I call it a vitamin because there's turmeric on it, in it, and black carrot snakes. His favorite treat, and now the boys' favorite treat. <laughs> it's like in, in Worked there. very hard to get that passport. Yeah, but... I had to go to the, uh, the Chicago Australian Consulate. I had to get several signatures from Australians to verify that I am who I say I am. They have to have a passport that has been around for two years, can't be family. It was an ordeal. We got it done. We happen to be 20 minutes from touching down in the city of Luke's and my birth. We've never, in the history of the band, we've never played in Australia in general. And we've, as a result, obviously never played in Sydney. There's a lot of layers to this feeling for us to come back um, after two decades of being away, we didn't really know what to expect. You know, we, we booked this performance uh, towards the end of last year and we sort of thought, oh no, is anyone even going to come? And, it, and the first show sold out so quickly that we were able to add a second show and, and I believe it has, has even sold out. And that, that as well just is an incredible, even before we step in the venue tomorrow, just makes us feel like this is a real beautiful homecoming and that Australia is giving us a bit of a hug. Welcome to Sydney where the local time is 4.51. Please remain seated until the captain switches off the seatbelt sign. Hey Courtney. Yeah. Is this your first time in Australia? This is my first time in Australia. Too. How are you feeling about it? Very Enneagram 7. Enthusiastic. <laughs> I've been married nearly nine years and I haven't been able to bring 
I haven't been back. I haven't been able to bring Courtney or the kids back. Courtney and I were uh, writing letters back and forth the last time that I was in Australia. Oh wow. So that's... Uh... This was before the internet. <laughs> Here are a few facts about Australia. Australia is the only country that has as its official mascot one of the animals, the kangaroo, which is an actual pest in Australia. There's so many of them. Australia is in fact the largest island in the world, but it's also a continent. Um, we also have more poisonous animals, insects, snakes, spiders in this country than any other country in the world. But good news, we uh, have figured out a silicone antidote. So if you get bitten, you take the same antidote for basically any of them. Um, and if you want to have a little bit of a uh, tutorial as to what you do if you're bitten, I can walk you through that as well. But you just have to let me know. Um, there are one million camels in Australia. They were introduced about 50 years ago. And the outback is such a thriving location for them that their population is doubling right now every nine years which is a big problem. It's part of the British Commonwealth. We have the Queen on our coins. Yes, we do. So Canada. I also, I also believe that uh, based off of our population, we have the largest border for the amount of people that we actually have living in our country. Don't quote me on that. Let's research that before we... Frog, so we had this really brilliant idea of uh, bringing in the cane toads. Yeah, because there was a locust sort of issue. So they thought, we'll bring in the cane toads to kill off the locust. But they, they forgot that the cane toads have some sort of poisonous venom of sorts. They basically have no predators. They have no predators, so they're everywhere. They just passed a law that you get 10 cents for every cane toad <laughs> you turn in. Come to Australia, you'll love it. <laughs> if you survive. If you don't die. So this morning uh, we got up and uh, my uh, my mother said, "Hey, I'll take the two older boys. You and Courtney can go just hang out for a little while." So uh, we went for uh, breakfast and then we ended up just walking over to uh, the uh, Sydney Harbour Bridge. And under there, there's like a little park. And then, sure enough, it opens up and there's the shot of the, the opera house. And she said, she looked at me and she said, "Luke, you're you're gonna play that building, you know, in just a few hours." And for me. You know, I've played a lot of special events and it hasn't, a lot of them don't hit me that much. But this one, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's the story of us being Australians. My dad used to do shows here in this show, uh, in this uh, venue. I don't know what it is, but I had like this major nostalgic moment of like gratefulness, thankfulness, feeling very... And he broke down an ugly cry. And I just ugly cried and I went, I just don't care. Okay, yeah, I did. Like 20 minutes. But, it was uh, like that scene yeah. in Hitch. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, it's definitely a kind of surreal thing. The Australian blood runs through our veins. We've been gone for a long time, but there's something about just being here where you're like, man, this feels feels very familiar, very much like uh, home, even though I haven't really lived here for many, many years. We were born in a town called Warunga. Warunga. <laughs> First time I ever told Courtney that, she went around the house saying it over and over, Warunga. <laughs> Warunga. And, uh... Luke mentioned dad was a concert promoter and so he'd, he'd, he's done shows here and I he would bring one of us kids around All the time. along you know he'd, he'd, he'd take one kid on a weekend trip another kid we sort of had this rotation and and I remember there was a show I mean this is this is a couple of decades ago now but there was a show you're not that old I'm not that old but there was one of one of my first memories was uh, hearing music and coming to a show um, at this location. So there's this really interesting thread of music is really what banished us from Australia in some <laughs> ways uh, because dad had lost a load of money on a tour. Music is what brought us to America. Um, and the music is what's brought us back. Kind of crazy. It is.